All right, everyone, no surprise here. Tim Scott has decided to drop out of the 2024 GOP primary. I told everyone, you know, you're going to see at least one more person leave before Iowa. I still think that probably another person as well leaves. I doubt it'd be Christie, since he's obviously not in it to win it. I don't even know other than having fun. There appears to be no other reason. Trump stays in because he's the front runner. DeSantis stays in because he's in second place. Haley stays in because she's, eh, there kind of for the party. Although, I'd be surprised if Nikki Haley didn't pick up a disproportionate number of Tim Scott's former support. Uh, and that's because he didn't endorse anyone, so he took the Pence route. I was slightly surprised he didn't uh, come out and make an endorsement, which I speculated would probably be Trump. With well, Tim Scott's voting base, he's from South Carolina, so, you know, sort of the, the native voting contingent thing, that would go to Haley. I think ideologically, more of it goes to Trump. Trump probably takes second when it, second helping when it comes to these votes, which gives him another point. Um, again, just bolstering his inevitability. I don't know that Tim Scott's kind of voters would prefer uh, Ron DeSantis. Uh, I'm, I'm skeptical of that. I think DeSantis got more from Pence uh, than, than he's going to get from Tim Scott. Uh, nonetheless, they'll both remain in. Ramaswamy is an open question. He's such a, he's kind of a blowhard at times, uh, so that would, I think, ego-driven, I think he'd prefer to stay in, but at the same time, he may be rich, but he doesn't want to blow his whole fortune fielding in a race where he ends up with like 2% support or something. So Tim Scott dropped out, and it was predictable, and I figured Tim Scott was among the more likely uh, to drop fairly early. I mean, we're not at Iowa yet. Uh, because I, I couldn't see really a coalition for him much more than for Mike Pence. You get some dedicated Evangelocon voters, and that's basically it, because much of what he did and said, like, you remember when he was on, on with Tucker, uh, with him one-on-one, -on -one, and he sort of prowled around the stage just randomly addressing people, and there was that famous moment where Tucker Carlson looked completely confused and, like, didn't know why Tim Scott was prowling around talking to the the screen and so forth, and it was very funny. The problem is he was a man in need of a coalition and couldn't find one. The we-must-win-at-all-cost voters are split between the more viable candidates because there are people that support Trump. They think that he can win. DeSantis and, and Haley effectively make the same pitches. You have the sort of nouveau tech voters, you could say, and they, I think they prefer Ramaswamy. The MAGA minus Trump crowd largely backs DeSantis. The neocons largely back Nikki Haley. Um, where's your coal? Where's what's left? Uh, there is none. And then the TDS voters that uh, actually are delusional enough to think that they can stop Trump, they vote for DeSantis, and uh, the rest are all with you know crushing it with Christie. Tim Scott never really had a chance. Um, the fact that you would he would be conceived of by some voters as more likable is not going to build you a coalition. Uh, during an election season that's highly politically charged, etc. I saw a couple of articles talking about how th this might be linked to uh, the revelation that he has a girlfriend, because pe people were, were saying, insinuating that he was gay, and so he came out and acknowledged that he had a long-term uh, partner. And uh, I don't think so, actually. Uh, I, I don't think that it was out of shame that he decided to drop out. I think it's more like, hey, I'm going to run out of money at some point. Or I'm going to be reduced to humiliating myself because I can't even hire any campaign staff and I'm basically just wandering around in the street saying, hey, did you vote for me? And be a very grassroots campaign, by the way. No astroturfing possible there. <laughs> no propaganda, at least. You can say that Tim Scott led a mainly clean campaign. Again, up on stage, you know, absent Trump being there, uh, you know, none, none of the others are viable. Likeability does count for something, I suppose. I don't have any problem with Tim Scott other than I think, again, it's unwise to build your entire campaign on Jesus Christ needing to be your, your running mate. Um, it, it never made sense. Yeah, maybe for the South Carolina voting base, which, yeah, okay, there's more religious voters, there's Southern Baptists, like Bible Belt voters. Um, How is that going to help you in Iowa? How is that going to help you in New Hampshire? one of the most atheistic parts of the country. Uh, again, it was a campaign that was desperately in need of ending anyway. I'm slightly surprised he didn't endorse anybody. I mean, I suppose that he's, he's staying out of the fray and minding his own business, though, so there's nothing wrong with that. It's like with Pence. 
You know, nobody wanted Pence's endorsement. He probably approached one of the other candidates and said, hey, I want to, I'm going to drop out tomorrow. Should, you know, we want me in my endorsement. Oh, hell no, <laughs> says DeSantis or Nikki Haley, or probably Haley, Mike Pence, uh, because of the warmongering side. I think the Jesus side would lean Tim Scott, oddly enough. Um, effectively, this is now a one-person race with two backups. That's now the colloquial definition of what we're seeing here. And uh, we'll see if he ends up uh, in, in a, any sort of role in the next Trump administration, by the way, which may very well happen. The Democrats are kind of melting down right now. I think that's why a bunch, another reason a bunch of Republicans got in there, like basically as a stopgap measure, just in case Trump keels or something, I want to be in this one because it's going to be easy to beat Joe. Although in the matchup polling, some of the candidates actually have difficulty beating Biden. Nikki Haley does not poll particularly well. DeSantis does a little bit better. It's, it's hit or miss. Of course, you've got less polling about that anyway, so you're not going to necessarily get as accurate a result. With Tim Scott gone, the field is effectively still the same because there's only one person actually running to win. The rest of them are running for the second place finish in hopes of establishing uh, long-term political viability or get a book deal or something or cabinet position or something. The only one there that's still in the race other than Trump, who I think is delusional and genuinely thinks that they have a shot is Nikki Haley. And by the way, the next debate stage might effectively be fucking two people, DeSantis and Haley. Ramaswamy at this point has petered out enough so it's not clear that he'll qualify. Probably does. He's probably there, but we're not sure. Christie, I, I don't know. If, if they raise the threshold at all, he probably doesn't clear the bar. Anyway, Asa Hutchinson is still in the running for what absolutely nothing it's worth, so... He, he can be the uh, one riding the fender of the clown car, which is the GOP debates. I find him funny, mainly just for the clips of candidates screwing up and screwing each other. Because that's basically what they've devolved into. So, uh, goodbye to Tim Scott. At the very least, your campaign was cleaner than the crazy shit we see from Nikki Haley or Ron DeSantis. So, yeah, and not a bad person. It's just, it definitely wasn't your time. And in a crowded field your kind of campaigning was just not going to cut it. What you, need, what you needed was a real empty field campaign where you could get to 10 simply because there are people that didn't want Trump to be the nominee. And then, you would, and then you'd have viability. You'd definitely be in through, you know, the, the early voting states, uh, but not with this many people uh, vote sharing. That's about all. Peace out.